needs to exist. Uh, this is a happier song. This is a song for everyone. Um, I thought that was a really happy song. Oh. <laughs> In celebration of the single grammar narrative. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Um, the, uh... <laughs> If you're driving up, Toke is the first city you come to on the American side of the border after crossing the Yukon, which is no small feat, because the Yukon is freaking huge, and they don't pave their roads properly. Um, and they have too many reindeer, so... <laughs> no. And um, so you, you get to Toke, and when I got to Toke for the first time ever, moving to Alaska, a place I didn't want to live, um, it was 40 degrees below zero, and the wind was blowing sideways. And there's a little brochure they give you in your hotel. Instead of a Gideon Bible in your, in your drawer at your hotel, there's a little paper pamphlet called Survival in the Arctic. <laughs> Why does my hotel have a survival guide? What am I doing? Why am I moving here? So this is a song about that feeling.
Margaret right here and being in the Duchess chair, obviously. <laughs> so everyone has to take orders from her tonight. <laughs> Have you met Anna before? No. <laughs> this is purely judging books by covers. I love you. <laughs> I thought it would be an inside joke for all of you that I'm not in on one way or another, so that's always fun. Um, <laughs> one more and then we'll take a little, a little break. Um, if you, this is the, this is the part where I say that this is a free concert and it's free not because it's not worth anything but because I never want someone to not come because they can't afford to come. So um, I'm really happy you guys all came. But um, if you think it's worth something, because I do, and also because it's very expensive for me to get from Alaska to Florida, you should um, uh, pay the recommended donation for the show tonight, which is um, five to ten bucks, depending on your ability. And it's right back there in a yellow jar. And I also take the plastic kind of money, so you have no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, if you do opt to pay the ten dollar donation, I have a record for you that has that last song on it, and the first song, and also maybe some I'll do later. Um, and if you opt to go for uh, $20, or in the neighborhood of, they're, they're by donation, I'm not strict about it, um, then uh, you can get my double album, which is really, 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 really super awesome, I promise. It has Stevie Wonder horns and banjos um, at the same time. It's great. So <laughs> you should definitely um, listen to it. And if you can't pick it up now, you can always get it later online. I'm doing some other material tonight that is on the internet. Wherever you buy music, it is probably there. Um, yes, and that way me and Scott can keep eating and stuff, and I can <laughs> pay for those records. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you will, because I think that the, the, the future of cool neighborhoods and the future of cool businesses is really up to us continuing to give them money, not because we have to, but because we decide we want them to stick around, you know? I feel that's kind of the future. We could, we'll probably be able to get most stuff for free in the future, yeah. but we have to kind of decide, I want to pay for this because I want it to be here, like this yeah. comic shop, you know? It's like, that's that's what we, we get to choose. We are the consumers and we have the power today, so. I hope you I hope you choose my music with your consumer power, and I hope you also choose other art and music and small businesses because that's what makes a neighborhood awesome and not plastic, if you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen! All right. This song is called The Nerd Anthem. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't presume to speak for all nerds, but I do presume to speak for those of us who don't wish to be pigeonholed with all the other nerds or wish to be reprimanded because we do not know a certain franchise as well as someone else might. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a big nerd tent theorist. I think that um, you, if, if, you, if you are really so passionate about stuff that other people back away slightly when you get really excited about it, then you're probably in. So. And if you're arguing about the difference between a nerd and a geek, you're definitely in. <laughs> So this song is called The Nerd Anthem. Can you hear this a little bit? Yeah. Back? Okay, good. I love how loud they are, they're so wonderful. They say to the world, I'm writing! <laughs> If I am on his fifth, then I'm in. 
disc one and disc two, not two disc ones or two disc twos, because that has cropped up occasionally. We don't want it to happen to you. That's the end of the logistical announcement. We now return to your regularly scheduled programming.
meant to offend, it just it needed to exist. <laughs> and it didn't yet. So my friend Joel Hermanson and I wrote that together. This is a song with a part for you. Hooray! Sing along time! Yeah. What? what? Um, this is a song about produce. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song about my favorite fruit. The avocado. You guys have some fantastic fruit down here. I hope you do not take it for granted. I hope you don't because I, I once lived in California and I took it for granted and then I moved to Alaska. And in California, there was a fruit stand with avocados, five for a dollar, straight off the tree. I could kind of drive by. Oh God, they were good. And then I moved to Alaska and it was one avocado for five dollars. And they were not so good. They were, they were, if you wanted to be sure of having an avocado, you had to buy three or four. You, you know the situation? Yes, exactly. Um, and and it's kind of become a gambling problem for me, <laughs> and an expensive one at that. So, so I wrote this song about avocados because they're like men, because they're you, you don't know until you take them home and cut them open, <laughs> and they cost five dollars. <laughs> And they're cheaper in California. <laughs> but when I say, you're my avocado baby, you say, you're my avocado baby, you say what I just said. It's not that hard. You're my avocado baby. You're my avocado baby. Yeah, that's good. Do the, do the shoulder thing if you can. You're my avocado baby. You're my avocado baby. There you can see that made your rhythm better and everything. <laughs>
sideburns and these sad red whiskey rimmed eyes singing this song about his friend Shane and I was like oh my god this is amazing and I begged him for permission to cover it and it is not easy to track down an Alaskan bison rancher cowboy <laughs> <laughs> to pay him royalties but I do so um, this song is about Jane but it's also about the universal spirit of Jane that clearly inspired Joss Whedon when he wrote the character because this is a real human being, ladies and gentlemen. Alaska is the outer rim, so <laughs> for many reasons. Um, yes, so here we go. To Jane! To Jane! Well, he's dumb, but he's tough. He likes to shoot stuff. He don't give a damn what you think. Spends his days turning branches, nights chasing wenches, and he'll happily kick in your teeth. Oh, he'll happily kick in your teeth. That's right, swing your beer if you got one. Or your root beer. Whatever you got, that's right. He comes from St. Joe, where he grew up with his mom. Lots of fish and this drunk Mexican. And he hopped a few trains just to ride off his pains. Now he's doing the best that he can. Oh, he's doing the best that he can. That's right. Now he's too proud to live and too dumb to die. Lord knows his mama tried. And he's always been well while he's going to hell. Still, it's good to have Jane on your side. Oh, it's good to have Jane on your side. Someday, Jane one-off comic coming to be written by Jed Wheaton or one of them. 
got him a big ass shotgun and some three legged dog in this shack on the hills, and that's Jane's retirement fund. Oh, that's Jane's retirement fund. Well, he rolls with the Satans, but he don't do much hate. He don't need a lot from this world, just a little more clutch and some fiddles and such, and just one night. Feels so bad. 
as it did before. Jacksonville. I'll have them on Friday. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you can go to uh, Bandcamp, scottbarkin.bandcamp.com and find them. Or if you uh, Google me, you'll find a myriad of uh, annoying websites that I've filled with content. Um, so you can check that out, too. Thanks a lot, and thanks to Marion for letting me sing a song. Back to, back to the show.
and uh, it's also it's also about a lot of I, I feel like the ships are characters in a lot of shows um, and this is kind of a song about that and then it wound up sort of being about the Mars rover <laughs> long live spirit and um, and so yeah and, and it's about uh, my beat up old laptop and uh, and Rusty old trucks and old bush planes made, you know, held together with duct tape. Things that just don't quit, you know? There needs to be a, a, a new celebration song for those, so this is it. But especially Karen Grace. <laughs>
is uh, uh, I'm doing now, I guess, two or three songs from a digital album. It was a physical album once, but it was produced by a sci-fi prop company, so they made a limited signed run of 1,000, because that's all they knew how to do. Um, <laughs> so now it's just a digital album. You can find it on my website or on iTunes or anything, and it's all kind of um, Firefly Battlestar Star Galactica themed music. Um, and this is a song from it. This is the title track, actually. It's a sort of a slam poetry slash um, angry jazz rant about why fiction and art and imagination matter. Is it raining? Yes, it's raining. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> go close your convertible. It's getting colder here. Yeah. Uh, I brought it with me, so I just wanted to feel more comfortable. No. <laughs> Not yet. I've seen how you guys drive in the rain. <laughs> There's only two schools of thought. Go faster and pull over. <laughs> That's just how we drive all the time. Oh, yeah. That is true. <laughs> um, when in doubt. So this yeah, so this is my this is my sort of um, jazz equivalent of battle rap about why um, why fiction is worth fictioning and why space travel is worth funding. So, yeah! Woo! Woo! And it's also about Kara Thrix. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta send, I gotta think, I gotta run, I gotta do, I gotta follow up, I gotta clean, I gotta send, I gotta find, I gotta get, I gotta give, I gotta go through that pile. I got a list, I 
no spark and no mystery, but I gotta take it off this rock, and I'm history.
they keep changing their privacy settings on you without warning you on monthly basis and revising your page when you didn't ask them to? Hello, surprise, your website's all different now. We thought you'd like the changes that we made without asking you and the content we deleted or inadvertently showed to everyone. Of the state you were in last Friday night, even though your grandma and all your mom and aunts are your friends. <laughs>
That's the end of the email list pitch. Let's do um yeah, sure, why not? Yes. Let's do it.
Carter and the and a for hosting. Max. 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 You're being thanked. Get in here. Um, and um, get out and hear more music or see more art as soon as you possibly can.